these are the new S790 combines. Same headers, this is the same FD140 header, 40 feet. There's the other combine, same header, the FD75. So same specs as the old S690 combines, still class nine, same capacity, just a couple of updates or change-ups. Uh, the biggest one probably being the Gen 4 monitor in the cab. We'll go take a look at that pretty soon. But there's also cameras here on the uh, return and then a camera here and then a camera here on the elevator. So you can see how clean or dirty the grain is from a cab. That's your camera there. Another update is the advanced PowerCast tailboard. So this gives us the option to either uh, spread the straw and chaff like usual with these spreaders. And these are uh, customizable from the cab. Once again, you can change kind of the direction you want to spread and the width and speed um, just by changing the f these fins and the speed of the spreaders right from the cab. You also could drop straw um, down this chute right behind the rotor if you wanted to uh, bale it. So from the cab, you can either change to spread or drop the straw, so both options. Another update we got are these Condex concaves. So these two black concaves in the front are Condex. Uh, we got a round bar in the middle plus a large John Deere large wire at the back. We changed concaves the other day. We had two Condexes in the front followed by two John Deere large wires. So we took the middle large wire out and put a round bar and took this second um, Max Thresh Condex out and put a large wire. So these Condexes are actually half the width so instead of three big concaves, there's actually six little ones. So they're actually nice to handle and pretty customizable for whatever you want. The first concave and last concave are hard to switch out because of the active concave. It hides these bolts that you have to get to. There's some bolts way up at the front and way at the back. On the new X series, I think the active concave is out of the way. It's way higher, so it makes these a lot easier. So the plan is just to leave this front Condex Max Thresh in there and then kind of just customize the middle portion to whatever crop we're threshing. So we have the round bars in here now for peas. We're going to take these out for wheat and canola once we're done peas. And we can probably put up to th uh, four Max Threshes in slot one, two, three, four, and then leave this John Deere large wire in as well. So this is the Gen 4 display. So it's getting fired up here still. So the controls are totally different from our old 690s. Different handle, same sort of design and function. We have the reels here, header here, presets one, two, and three. This is the rock badger skunk button. Shuts everything down. Auger swing out here, auto steer, auger unload. There's a scroll wheel on the back. I think that scrolls through options on the monitor. There's presets A, B, C, and D here. Also E here. Header float dial and dial of speed for the reels here. What is it beeping at me for? Oh yeah, so we're gonna try to do some calibrations here because nothing's calibrated um, with these headers on. So I'm gonna try to do a couple of those. Yeah, that's why it's letting me know. Uh, throttle here, road mode. Speeds one and two, parking brake, the uh, separator, header, you got um, 
music controls, lights, temperature, fan, and then your threshing settings, concave clearance, speed, fan, chaffer shoe, uh, spread, and a place for your phone right there, pretty handy. I used to just put it right there. I like that. I like that. So there's many ways to get to the same place. So for the rotor, you can either go here or here. Gets you to the same harvest settings, threshing clearance, threshing speed, stuff like that. Spreaders at the back. Yeah, so we're on chop mode. And then basically the biggest and fastest it can go. So we can play with that depending on wind. Uh, sometimes the spread blows back into your uncut pass. So you're harvesting what you just spread, so you don't want that. This opens the hopper, so we can do that. Same capacity as the S690's 400 bushels. We have to put our the camera in the hopper still. Don't have that in yet. Okay, so let's back this guy up and we'll try to find a nice flat piece in the yard and we will do some header calibrations, I think. I also have to try to figure out the uh, data sharing between the combines so both combines can talk to each other. You can have up to six machines on one uh, system. So this combine can set an EB line and then the other combine can find it and both use the same EB line. And then also the shading in the field, um, both the shading from both combines will show up in, in my monitor so you can see where the other combine has harvested. So that's pretty cool. First, let's see if I can get it switched over to peas. We're in canola right now. Okay, let's start setting this header. So we want to find the calibration tab. Combine on level ground, yes. Engine running at high idle. Okay, do it. These FD1 uh, reels are really nice for feeding the crop into the draper. There's more fingers as they're closer together. Uh, it really helps with feeding compared to the FD75s. And then the FD2s are out now, and uh, I think they're supposed to be even even better than this guy. All right, save changes. So if I press one and two, two is going to be my return to cut, so I can lower my header right to the ground. Might need fine tuning once we get into the peas, but it's better to do this for the most part now. So let's try that as my number two. So now if I press number one, it should raise my header. Seems a bit high. Two should go down now. Oh yeah. One should go up. Pretty good. Let's go header calibration. Touching a new different header. I'd say that falls under under us. Okay, got it. Please header. What the hell? I bet is because I had that still engaged. I bet, I bet, I bet, I bet. I could have confused it. Nope. Okay, I'm not sure. Let's try to get the line share going. Let's get that set up. 
Yeah, I'm in hectares and tons per hectare and meters. I need to change that. Units. Nope. Okay. Okay. Yes. Reboot it, baby. See if my job or shared work list, whatever you want to call it, is still here. If it is, we'll hop in the other combine and try to find the job. It may take up to 30 seconds. Oh, right, okay. Okay, let's do that. We'll leave this running, because it probably has to be, I'm not sure. To the other combine. I'm gonna be surprised if this works. Also, you have to turn on uh, something to make it accept the job, if that makes any sense. Yes. Enable sync. Go to work list within work setup. Work group found. Here? Oh, here. Oh, yeah! Okay. That's my... That's my job from the other combine. So... Yeah, there's no track set up. Okay, let's join this group. Remember, <laughs> this is crazy. I want to, I want to see if, it... oh, I didn't join the group in the other combine. So, how do I get out of here? This one? Okay, I got to I got to go back to the other combine, join the group because I'm not in the group. And then I think both combines will show up on the screen. Combine needs a circle. Well, that's the other combine. Oh, man, I'm out of breath. Why? The orientation's weird. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So it'll map yield, coverage, or moisture. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it'll be blue or light blue. I see. Well, that's cool. There's different types of tracks you can set. Driving a circle, boundary, straight A, B, um, whatever you want. I think this is enough room to try to set a line. So let's go. A, B. Set A. Please drive 10 feet. Okay. <laughs> We're on. So the combine doesn't have to be running. You can just click the header on, and then if you do that, it won't start because the separator isn't engaged. And then you can do stuff like this. Now we're gonna try to grab the same line with the other combine. 
it should it should work yeah so auto track is on and then if I was combining it, it would shade and then I'll be able to see my shading from that combine so if I go to make sure I don't pick some trees oh yeah so many things to talk about a little mirror up there to see your hopper window kind of handy so now when I go to set track it'll find oh yeah there it is that's the track I just made we're gonna accept that track there it is the combine was right on that track that red mark was my a and B so we are going to hit that same track in my little runway here wait there we go auto steer yeah before we had this line share uh, we kind of just one combine would set a track and then the other combine would cut behind it and just try to stay as straight as possible and just try to get the lines very, very close. But now, I mean, the possibilities are endless. John Deere's coming out in a couple days to do the rest of the calibrations, the ones that I couldn't figure out. Probably a couple other things that they have to do before these machines are field ready, but they're pretty close, got those combines synced up, which is really cool. Uh, those con concaves are changed. Just need, we need fuel. Uh, there's no fuel in here. And then I think I need some guards. We have lots of knives, don't have any guards. Plus uh, a filter for the other header, uh, the MacDon filter, need that. But pretty close, pretty close to harvest. So that's the overview of the uh, John Deere S790s. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.